Hey, good morning guys. What's going on? Long time no see. Smack here coming to you live from Tokyo, Japan. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to be talking to you guys a lot about sort of a lot of the FUD going on in the Aleph Zero ecosystem. Uh, personally, I've been very distracted by work. Uh, we just had our, uh, our my actual day job. We launched our satellite, our Address J satellite into outer space. And it was a successful launch, very exciting, but that's actually the reason I've not been around. It's not really because of all the FUD and everything. I just have been so busy with that, uh, working a lot of overtime, trying to make sure we have that successful launch of the satellite. So yeah, uh, today's video, I wanna talk about the hackathon and some of the uh, really awesome participants and also kind of talk about uh, if I did have any FUD, what would I say is actually going on that could be fixed in the Olive Zero ecosystem. And that's just my personal opinion. I'm a no expert by any means. But I just like to put it out there. I don't think, uh, I think exchange listings are very important, but uh, I'm kind of with the LF0 team on this. I don't think that that's just a, a win all kind of idea, but there are some important things like playing with the narrative, which is AI right now and gaming. And I think maybe the LF0 team, they focus a lot on other things, uh, especially like Telco and uh, Did, as well as some other things that they think are really important, especially when it comes to, well, this was the reason Aleph Zero was made was for privacy and for compliance, right? So that they could get along with the governments and that they would have like no chance of ever being shut down by a government ent government entity. So that's, that's their main focus. But right now there could have been playing sort of the AI trend or whatever, or the DeFi, uh, what do you call it? I think gaming fi trend or whatever. But honestly, uh, I had the game fi trend before and most of the games that came out were pretty crappy. And as well as AI, I mean, AI is good, but I don't think AI and blockchain necessarily have to be connected in any way. I think that companies can make AI products that are not based on the blockchain and it'll be completely fine. It doesn't, just because AI is popular in the stock market, doesn't mean you necessarily have to have it be popular in the blockchain market as well. As you can see, like the winners here uh, in the different categories, but they did have categories here, general, telco, uh, did, DeFi, uh, tooling and infrastructure category and gaming and i'm guessing that like, the reasons that for this is that because they're working really closely with deutsche telecom that this is a very big category for them because they're kind of partners now and deutsche telecom has a rather large stake in lf0 so i think this is one of the biggest reasons telco is in here and honestly who's to say telco won't be the next big thing i know that there was a few uh telecom uh, was it telcoin actually that made it pretty big and did really well and uh, it's really good for remittance. And I think actually that is a part of a broken part of fiat currency is a lot of the remittance and dealing with talking to people overseas and actually sending and receiving your money. So I think this this is actually a really big category that's just being not not being hyped right now. And it's a very important category, I should say. The difference between important and hypeable is very sort of, I guess, varied person to person. But, you know, I just put my two cents in and that's that's all, that's it. That's what it is. But today's video, I will cover uh, some of my favorite uh, projects in the hackathon be talking to you guys about what's going on there the out of zero core team i believe they've all been really focused on this which is why they haven't been so much focusing on uh, exchange listings and marketing and stuff like that because this this hackathon was taking a lot of their time so i think a lot of the fudsters were able to come in during this time period and kind of uh give their little their little fud and their their two cents or whatever but the fact is everyone was really busy on this. And if you go to the hackathon website, you can see that there's a lot of great participants and I think they did a really good job. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about, I'll be talking about ZK ramp, uh, Detelco, um, as well as the hunters. I really like the hunters app and I'll just log it. I've, it's kind of, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to go too much in the ID category. I'm a little bit tired of it i mean we already have azero id if i have time i'll go ahead and go into this at a later date sorry sorry team if you guys uh if you guys are watching this i, I love to cover everything but i just don't have time so i also want to cover um yeah zk ramp is in here a lot as well as doggo yeah so doggo the hunters zk ramp and detelgo detelgo today uh, i'll have to take a look at some of these other projects but I think these are the biggest ones for me. During this hackathon, basically there was a couple different tracks. Like I mentioned, they have uh, D tooling and infrastructure, DID, which is identity related stuff, and gaming, D uh, DGN, DeFi, and Telco. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in guys. So first we can take you guys to the Hunters here. And the Hunters is uh, was actually probably my, my favorite project, but the thing is I don't think that 
the way they did it is necessarily the most practical. And this is just my two cents. Okay, so you have an organization and they're given a bunch of NFC cards during an event. And then the organization can give the, all the NFC cards to their sort of hunted category. And the hunted category will be like people who are experts in a certain subject matter. And then the hunters who have the app, they can basically register online at this. Uh, and then they go to the meetup or the social event and they're required to get the NFC card uh, scanned in order to get like a some sort of prize or uh, you know an NFT rank or something like that. I think it's a really cool idea, honestly. I think this might be a really good target for like, uh, for example, like Michael Kors or Burberry or some sort of fashion designer who wants people to go visit their stores all around the world. And the more stores that you go in the scan with the NFC card, the more uh, points you get or something like that, the higher ranking you get in that in that uh, in that sort of I guess in the app for that company or whatever. But I think that for the Hunters app, it's kind of awkward if you're going to be walking up to somebody during a during a meeting and kind of trying to ask if you can scan their card and then just walk away. I mean, it's cool, but the the person who who actually is supposed to be holding the NFC card to get scanned, they're going to kind of feel used. And uh, personally, I wouldn't want to be someone at the event having to like be like, oh yeah, here you go, and then scan, scan, scan. But their actual presentation of it was really good. And I think the name and the branding is also really nice. Yeah, I think the idea of getting ranked up for like, uh, for like what do you call it? For loyal customers and customers who kind of want to go explore every single part of a brand. I think this is a really cool idea. I just think that the NFC tagging for people will be kind of awkward. So this is a really great idea and I'm really excited to see uh, if they're able to go ahead and keep building on Aleph Zero. They're also using the Nightly app, I guess, which is really cool integration. Uh, the Nightly app is a really great, uh, you know, DeFi wallet. And I'm really excited to see uh, where the Hunters goes. Uh, the branding was just amazing. If you guys get a chance, go ahead and take a look at the movie. I'll leave a link to the uh, the main website in the YouTube video today. So you guys can take a look at the Hackathon website. There's a lot of really good, interesting projects. And if you're looking to build on Alpha Zero, you can actually go here and you can hunt out different uh, developers or different artists or whatever. All the people who are involved in these projects are actually listed on the Hackathon site. So if you're looking for people to help you build on LF0 or build your community on LF0, this is actually a great place to go get names at least. So that's just another idea for you guys. Uh, let's go into the telco category. So the telco, decentralized protocol for transferring phone numbers between operators. Now, this seems like something that is coming from a, a subject matter expert, an SM, SME. This is something that I really wouldn't know much about because I haven't been much into uh, telecommunications. I think the idea is really good and it really sort of hit home with the Aleph Zero core team as well as probably Deutsche Telekom. Uh, this it looks like it's definitely a really big problem within the actual telecommunications industry. Now, there isn't a great presentation for this, but obviously, I guess the uh, actual problem that it solves is real and that it's a really good way of solving the problem. And I think that's why they won um, they won their the telecommunications, the telecommunications prize. The problem is transferring phone numbers between operators is an opaque and unreliable process. We've personally been hit with issues like old operator deactivating phone number in old system, new operator not activating in, in, new system, in a new system and phone number being reassigned to someone else. So this, this problem, basically they're looking to solve it by issuing NFTs and basically uh, allowing those NFTs to be easily kind of switched out by the central authority. And then the teleco operator can contain in their current end user IDs, sorry. Like I said, I'm not an expert in this. I don't know much about telecommunications personally, but I think it's really cool that they're actually opening up to a whole new category. And I've never, you don't see this much in crypto. Usually they're always trying to ride the hype train, but this is something that actually was a hype train like three or four years ago with uh, Telcoin. But I haven't really heard much besides Telcoin doing anything with, with telecommunications. So that's really cool. They're, oh yeah, I was looking at their uh, GitHub. So they have all their GitHub stuff here. And most of these projects, you can check out their GitHub pages and check out their code. And even some of them allows you to like, well, they all allow you to do some sort of testing with their project and do something with it. So. I would, I would encourage you guys to check it out and see what's going on there. Uh, it'll give you also a taste of the newer projects that are coming into uh, Aleph Zero, or that might be coming into Aleph Zero, and get you an early uh, chance to invest early. So uh, let's go ahead and check out Doggo. So yes, Doggo is a dogfighting simulation game, card game where cards are NFTs on the blockchain. Now my two cents, I don't really think dogfighting is that exciting, uh, but I do like uh, Pokemon style games with like monsters and stuff. I'm not sure if, if this is supposed to be like 
monsters or if they're supposed to be dogs or but there really is no um there was no visual presentation this was all the back end card simulation which is great as well i think uh it's just harder for us to visualize what's going on here but they did win i think the uh yeah i'm pretty sure they won the oops yeah they won the um the uh, game five bit of the competition so that's really cool and hunters got second place and like i mentioned hunters is really good i just think that I'm not sure why, the, why they got second place in this, but they did win uh, a bunch of other awards in other categories. So that was really uh, cool. And like I said, I really like their presentation. Let's go on to the big winner here, ZK Ramp. So ZK Ramp, this is probably, this is this one like first place in a lot of categories, categories. And I think they also won the overall, like they were the overall winner of the whole hackathon. And the reason that I think they won is because they have a really cool way of on-ramping people without KYC into Aleph Zero by utilizing a special ZK proof system. So basically it sounds like you can apply to go ahead and deposit or deposit money and then you can get uh, like a ticket, a ZK proof ticket or something. And then you can go ahead and once you do that and with, and once you deposit with one hour, then you are good to go. I think there's a one hour limit or something based on the system. And it apparently requires some sort of, the only kind of ID that you're required to have is that your transfer wise or something or your actual uh, pay paypal or whatever has an email confirmation set up for it so i think they're using transfer wise if i read through this correctly uh, i think that's what wise is right here so i'm pretty sure this is transfer wise please don't 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 uh, name me to a cross or anything like that but uh yeah that's I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing here but it's really i think it's a really interesting idea and basically right now lf0 does have that on their new website, they do have that page where you can actually just go in and, you know, buy, buy with crypto using their KYC process with credit card and everything. So this would really, really align with their, their current model of just being able to buy on the LF0 website and then being able to use DeFi directly from there using Common or uh, the other DEXs built on LF0. That's it for the video today. Uh, I hope that helped you guys understand why the LF0 team has been so dang busy the past two months. And now that this hackathon is finished, and all of the, uh, what do you call it, the code checking and audits for their products have been under, undergone for the bridges and as well as the common decks. I think that there's gonna be a lot of great launches coming up here in later February, as well as possibly early March. So I wouldn't be too focused on marketing now because they did mention multiple times that their team is focusing on sort of, they're doing an overall coverage of things, but in the, over the past month and a half, they were really focused on just bringing making people focus on developing on LF0 because once you get these devs focused on actually building on LF0, they're actually put a lot of time and effort into this, which means they now have a stake in LF0, which is actually increases LF0's product, uh, increases the product value a lot more than actually just listing on an exchange. Exchange is just a temporary boost uh, and a good liquidity boost. But at the same time, if we have this hackathon first with like 15, 20 new devs, Building on LF0, building projects on LF0, I think that's a huge, uh, that's a much bigger boost that we could use before we get the exchange listing. Now, like I said, my other two cents was, I think it would be great if the LF0 team could focus more on a little bit of hypey stuff like AI and maybe uh, GameFi right now. It's just hard to follow the trends and I mean, they change so fast, but that might be an idea. Uh, but I'm guessing the hackathon was decided a long time ago, possibly before this whole uh, this whole hype bubble, AI bubble got started, but I mean, it would have been a good idea. Anyways, that's it guys. You have a great day and an awesome week. Uh, please stake to Cryptstar staking. We do have a validator node on Aleph Zero, Tezos, Liberland, and, uh, we have one more coming up here soon. So yeah, hope to see you all in the near future and have an awesome week. Peace out.